Hello everyone, I'm Nature Angel and welcome back to my channel. If you watched my last video, I did 10 reasons on why you should be a school psychologist and this video is on 10 reasons why you may not want to be a school psychologist. So let's get right on into it. disclaimer before I begin this video is not to say that these are why you personally should not be a school psychologist or that these things would make you a bad school psychologist it's just some things to consider before jumping into this field and some things that you may be like hmm I'm not too sure if that fits for me or will work for me Basically, it's some things to think about. But anyway, getting into this, the first thing that I would consider that might make you not want to be a school psychologist is if you're not good at readjusting your plan. So if you're someone that likes a routine, same thing every day, like I come in, I do this and this and this and this, that is not how it works as a school psychologist. You may plan on doing this, this, and this in this order, but then a crisis appears or then you have an unexpected meeting and then you also have to write this report, but now that report needs to be pushed off and this crisis needs to come first and then you have that meeting right after that you may miss because that crisis. Number two, if you are a procrastinator, so, if you like to wait for the last minute to do things, there are deadlines and let's say that you're like, I'm gonna test this kid a week before and write the report. Per the last reason <laughs> that I just said where unexpected things can happen, if you wait till the last minute, you might not get everything done or you're gonna be taking your work home with you and it might stress you out. And if you don't meet these deadlines, you know, these are like legal documents and timelines and it could just cause a whole bunch of problems that it's best to avoid so if you are someone that likes to wait till the last minute that may cause some problems for you in the job number three the stress of grad school so obviously once you're done with schooling and you're working as that school psychologist you don't have to think about it but the whole process if you're someone that really doesn't like school you know you have to get your bachelor's degree and then you have to go and do the masters and if you watch my other videos, you know how stressful grad school was. Like, it, I mean, I didn't have any time to work outside of it. I would not have been able to finish school if I didn't have help from my family. It was just really hard and it was all day, every day, even the weekends, the summers, all the breaks, like over the holidays, because I would have winter classes and summer classes. So if you don't like schooling, you're gonna be in school for a long time and it's pretty stressful <laughs> grad school is very very stressful it will test your it will test your mental strength i'll tell you that number four if you are the type of person that takes work home with you and while that could mean physically i also mean it mentally there are things that you will hear and things that you'll be working with that can be mentally challenging and i do feel like you can't and it's easy for me to say but you cannot take those stressors home with you mentally because when you're at work you're doing work but you should not have that in your head you know before bed and worry about it and i know that's hard to do especially for some people but if you do that you will probably drive yourself crazy because like i said there's some tough things that happen in the job and I'm not saying that you can't adapt to it or find your own self-care and ways to take care of yourself, but that is something that you have to prepare for is to work with and deal with these crises that could be hard to hear, hard to work with, and it is important that you are not one of those people or at least can potentially work around taking that mentally home with you. Number five, if you want to be around children a lot. I know in the last video, I used that kind of as a plus, but if you're someone that you're like, I want to work with kids all the time, kind of like how a teacher does, you want to be around children all the time, that's 
not particularly our job. Yes, we may meet with certain students certain days um, a week or when we test the kill, you might meet with them a lot all you know at once like back to back until we finish the testing and then we might not ever see that student again so if you're one person that really wants to like oh i want to work with this kid all the time and just be that person you are not going to be around them as much as you think now again with school psych it's good that you can pick and choose how you want your day to be but you aren't going to be around children as much as a teacher would be around them where they're around them all day it's certain times kind of when you can and when you have to number six sometimes the logic doesn't make sense so perfect example like if we want to get a kid special education services for id intellectually disabled we would have to have low test scores now again this is at my school my district in virginia so it might be different depending where you're at, but they would have to have low test scores below 70. And then they also need an adaptive scale that's below 70 because it needs to be at least two standard deviations below the mean. But let's say that they, they score really like extremely low on the IQ tests, on the achievement tests, but then their adaptive is average. Well then, they aren't going to get services for that category, even though you see that they're struggling. And depending on the scores, like if there's no discrepancy or strengths and weaknesses, then they're just not going to get any special education services. Even if you think they would need it, the data that you're using isn't supporting how the structure is set up, if that makes sense. And sometimes, most of the time, so far, it's worked for me, but sometimes I get kids and I'm like, they really need this help and with these scores it's not gonna happen and that is why I don't like retesting children sometimes because they're getting the help they need and I know that retesting them might actually make them not receive support that I know they need but then the new test scores are gonna say something different so I'm sorry about that little tangent and rant but that is something that happens. Number seven, if you do not deal well with pressure. So I will say, so far it seems like in the beginning of the year and the end of the year, it's pretty slow, pretty chill, easy going, everything's great. And then in the middle, boom, like just nonstop. Like I need to assess this kid and this kid and this kid, but I have two schools and it, it just gets hectic. So, you know, I make a plan and everything and then it works itself out. But there is a lot of pressure and deadlines and if you don't like that, that like crunch time, that pressure time, it does happen. So again, something to consider if you're trying to be a school psychologist. Number eight, depending where you are, you may be overworked. So for example, there are some schools where the school psychologist is attending to 1,500 students, and that is about three times more than we are supposed to work with, about three times more than the ratio that we are supposed to have, and that could overwork you. Also, depending on the school, if they have lower staff, they might try to make you do things that are not a part of your job, which if they do, I would definitely let them know, like, that is not in my career and <laughs> that is not things that I do as a school psychologist so that they know because if you start doing things you aren't supposed to do that might become routine and again make you overworked and we don't need anyone especially school psychologists burning out especially early on so definitely keep that in mind when looking for jobs and how that work-life balance is gonna go. Number nine, if you don't like writing, that might be a reason not to be a school psychologist because it is a lot of writing. There's a lot of paperwork. I'm not saying that's all you do, even though some school psychs, that is mostly what they do, but there's a lot of writing in the reports. My short reports are like six to seven pages. My normal reports, I would say like nine to 10, long ones would be like 16, 17, 18. 
and I have templates now, you know, and I go in and adjust and all that stuff. So it definitely helps save time, but it still takes a lot of time with the writing, the rereading, and putting it on the sites that it needs to go on, and it is a lot of writing. And I don't mind that, but I know some people do. Number 10 is just the cost like of certifications and trainings and getting your license. Like for NAS, for example, it's about $210 in the first year and I think it goes up to $310 after your third year to get your license renewal every year. And this is not your nationally certified certification. This is for your NASP yearly membership. And then I know when I was getting my Pennsylvania license, I think it was about $200 for my certification to get my Virginia license. I think that was about, about $270-ish. And then on top of that, which some schools will cover it or reimburse you or pay for it, you have to have like your TB test, a physical, you know, all this extra stuff to go along with the certification and it takes time but it's just really expensive so it does cost a lot all right so everyone I have done 10 reasons why you should be a school psych and 10 reasons why you might not want to be a school psychologist and I really hope this video helped you if you have any ideas for future videos that you want me to do let me know and if you have any comments on reasons why you don't want to be a school site or things that you're worried about nervous about you can leave that down below in the comments or message me and as always i thank you and i appreciate you so 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 so, so much for watching and i will see you guys next time okay bye guys